What is up, everybody? Tars22 here. Um, I cleared out a little area around this. You've seen this before in the last two uh, series. I am just going to be digging this out. So. Still on Minecraft. Cool. So yeah, I'm just gonna. God damn it! I gotta be more careful. Apparently. Because already I fucking destroyed a. Sussy gravel. Actually, I need the ladders. What I don't need is that. This will actually be probably the last stream I do for a while. I think it's just wheat. It is just wheat. And I'm, it's not my own... I guess it is kind of my own choosing that I don't do it for a while, but I'm just starting a new job tomorrow at 8 a.m., so that's why I won't be able to stream for a minute. But I will continue to stream as much as I can and continue to upload content onto my YouTube channel as much as I can. Uh, whether that means I record stuff at work or at home or whatever. I doubt I'd be allowed to record stuff at work. I'd get fired if I did that. Who the hell? An emerald! Huzzah, that does nothing for me right now. Okay, I'm probably going to do this whole thing in one, one go, and then I'll transfer everything to and fro after... And I did make quite a few more upgrades at home. Uh, just in between episodes, thought that many, that maybe people wouldn't want to see me build a lot, so I made some upgrades, I made some changes and shit to the home area. I realized that this isn't coming out straight. None of these come out straight. They're all like diagonal and shit.
first chest is going to house all the good, good items. And the rest of them are going to store the shit items. Looks like we're already moving over. Oh, um, this is y'all have seen this before. It's the uh, this is a trail ruin. I know some people uh, like me digging out the trail ruins, so I'm doing it in a recording instead of, uh, or in a stream recording, whatever, instead of just on its own on the side, you know. I've gotten complaints when I do stuff not in an episode, and like do it in between episodes, so I kind of like... I'll stream it, but I won't upload it, type of deal. Because, I don't know. It's not going to be smooth. See, it's, it's slightly slanted. Don't know why it's slightly slanted, but it is. All of it is. None of it's coming out straight with the pixels. It's all fucked. Even this way it's slanted. Why? I don't know. I'm not a programmer with Minecraft. If I was, though, I would have made it flat, because that does kind of it does kind of rattle my OCD in a bad way. <laughs> and for those who are watching stream or YouTube who do not know what OCD means, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And everyone can have it. I mean, fucking everyone in my family has it. Yeah. I know some people probably aren't bothered by it, but... And I probably just ruined a lot of people's... Uh, enjoyment of the update, but I mean, if you're gonna program something to come out of something, yeah, I get that it's supposed to be like an ancient buried structure or treasure or whatever, but like, if you're gonna make something that's a pixel wide in the game, come out of more pixels, make it straight, make it flush. Yeah. I agree there with you. The TP has to be fixed as well, so it faces away. I agree. God, I'm so nervous that I'm gonna dig up another sussy gravel like I did the very first, or like the third or second or third gravel I dug up of this. 
Uh, it's a sussy boy. Don't look, it's gonna be off center. Don't look! It's gonna drive you crazy just like it does me. Yeah. If you're gonna be doing toothpaste squeezing, start from the bottom. That was the wrong chest. Like, don't start midway up the tube and just go, let's go from here. No, like, bottom to the, bottom to top, bottom to top always. Yes, you may miss some some of the time, and that's why you go back and squeeze it all the way up, but... Uh, sorry if the connection just jumped out. Um, am I back? I just got a notification saying that OBS stopped for... Okay. I will be right back. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on. Give me one second. I'm so sorry. Okay, hopefully it stays this time. I don't know. I, I do know what's going on. There's a... It's storming outside my house at the moment. Hopefully it stays working now, fingers crossed. Uh, cool. Sorry that it keeps, keeps crashing, I've, shit. There's a storm going on outside my house right now, like it's just barely beginning and so if it disconnects again, I do apologize. I don't want it to, but chances are... It's gonna happen again. Here, I'm okay with that. If it means I don't. Dude, for real, there was a flood. So I live in, uh. Because fucking everyone's gonna know eventually. I live in Utah. And I'm not kidding you, like, one town over, like, the town that's literally two miles from where I live, uh, flooded. And one elderly person unfortunately didn't make it. I am sad, I am sorry for their family. I know they're not watching, but if they do somehow come across my videos, for some reason, I am sorry you lost a loved one. I am sorry that that has happened to you. I hope that 
uh, whatever happens next, that you may find peace and that. I'm trying to think of the best words to say, and I'm not a good word thinker all the time. So. Uh, just the hope that they find peace and they find happiness and stuff. And I, I, I am sorry that their loved one passed away. I start stuttering when I don't know what to say. And I don't know why. Or when I'm having trouble finding the right words to say. Forget the side buttons. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not a, again. I'm not a good word thinker. My wife was annoyed with me with word with how I would try and speak around her when I when we first met. Uh, but then later on in our relationship, she got used to me just having trouble finding the words. I agree. I hope that they find peace as well. Okay, so we got five sussy boys to look at. And, as everyone knows, they're all off-center. Which is annoying. Like, even when they come out this way, they're off. Off-kilter. You can tell more with the bigger ones that they're off and... Find a lot of gold and yellow dyes. I mean, I guess the on, on a side note, I'm sorry for jumping all over the fucking place. Uh, the one good thing about OBS, other than it uh, sometimes shrinking or enlarging the windows or whatever. Um, or the recording screen or whatever, uh, is you can pause the recordings and you can pause the stream from OBS where, uh, the other one you can't. You kind of just have to go with the flow. Okay, my inventory is fine right now. Pottery shard. I gotta make one uh, pottery. A pottery board. Oh, hi. What are you giving me? Something small, apparently. A candle. I don't much care for the candles, to be honest. what I didn't want to have happen. That's two this time. Let's try and keep it two or less. Really, do I really need seeds? I mean, I guess I don't, but they could come in handy later. <sighs> okay, let's just put all the goods in here. These candles aren't really goods, but... And the 
rest goes down here. I guess it would just be easier to distinguish the two if I kept them down here. So I will. How's your day going so far today? I guess as I as I've done before in the past I should just kind of do level by level by level and not just focus on one area solely Got a sassy boy. More seeds. Ooh. Dude, those sound delectable. I wish I was there. So I could try some. Honestly, I don't think I'm that good at cooking either, but I still like to... I like to try. But dude, ground pork tacos sound delectable. Not delict. Delectable, not delictable, sorry. Dude, salt is the saving form, is the saving factor, I mean, for most stuff, like, there's so much, there's so many different foods that I've tried that honestly taste terrible, and then I just add a little bit of salt and it makes it so much better. Like, there's been a couple different types of corn that I've tried that taste a lot better, like a hell of a lot better with salt, there's been uh, some types of tomatoes there's been some pastas there's been like, I think numbers running through my mind I want to say like 13 or 14 different meat dishes I've had like some steak, some pork, some poultry that yeah it was good without the salt but it was even better with the salt and like a lot of people don't like cooking with salt because they're like well it's high in sodium and I'm like if you add like five cups of salt it's full of sodium but if you just do a couple tablespoons or maybe even a teaspoon it's fine because there have been admittedly admittedly some dishes I've had from like Michelin star restaurants when I've gone on vacation or whatever that have really that have good food I'll say but then they have like mass, mass amounts of salt in their dishes, and I'm like, this is too salty. Yes, salt does help with a lot of dishes, but not when there's like six cups of salt in the dish. <laughs> Honestly, same. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm low key nervous for my first day back at work tomorrow. I guess not back at work because I haven't ever worked here before, but I'm nervous to go back. Also, I found out that I am really close to hitting a uh, partner here on Twitch. I just need, like, an average of three people talking per ten episodes or whatever. And I'll hit a either, not partner, but a, either partner or affiliate. I don't fucking know. Thanks, man. Ooh, why are you vibrating? Why did you vibrate? What happened? Oh, it was just a notification that someone... Another YouTuber that I follow that actually inspired me to start streaming just went live. I hope to maybe someday do a video with him, but I doubt it'll happen. But who knows? Thanks for having faith in me, man, though. That does... that means a lot. Sorry, my ADHD is, like, jumping all over the wall. I'm, like... I'm talking about work tomorrow. I'm talking about... Other streamer went live. I'm... Oh, uh, it's actually a couple different people, like, one of the people that inspired me to, uh, to do YouTube originally was Markiplier. Of course, I'm sure he's a lot of people's inspiration to do YouTube. Um, and the person to, that inspired me to do Twitch was Captain Sparkles and Zine. Because Zine actually lived in Utah up until recently. He moved to Texas. And Captain Sparkles, of course, lives in California. He just moved as well into uh, sharing a home with someone because he was running out of money from buying too many cars. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the type of money to buy cars. I don't even have the type of money to upgrade my mic yet. But, yeah. So, Captain Sparkles and Zine inspired me to do Twitch, and, uh, fuck. Markiplier uh, inspired me to do YouTube. Those were my inspirations for why I do this. And then, as time went on, I just realized this is fun as hell, so... I keep it up. I love interacting with people. I love talking with people on over the internet. I, that sounds dangerous, but it's not. It, well, if you do it correctly, it's not dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I admittedly was a slow start at the beginning. Like, uh, oh, I forgot a couple things. As everyone is slow at the beginning, uh, I started my YouTube, I'm not going to say career, because I haven't made any money, well, I've made like six cents back before they made it mandatory that you have to have a thousand subs to make money, but um, I started my YouTube journey back in fucking 2012, 2013, and then uh, I didn't start Twitch until 2017, but I didn't, shit, there goes two more, so now I'm up to four, I agree, I've had several different channels, 
um, just because some of them were copyrighted, some of them were banned, some of them were, uh, just a lot of shit happened at the beginning. Um, like, I used to have a channel called Record Scratch, where I would do cringy videos and, like, challenges and stuff back in, like, 2012 style cringy challenges and videos and stuff. Of course, I was a, uh, 12 at the time, so. Or was I 13? It was one of those. I was one of those ages. Um. But. Yeah, I started then, and I was just doing kind of cringy stuff at that point, and then. Uh, I fell off the wagon for a couple years as well, I will admit, because schooling and uh, looking and starting my first job, and then I was hit by a car while skateboarding in 2015, and that took another couple years off my YouTube career. Um... I'm actually planning on doing, like, kind of an in-depth video, uh, on my whole accident and everything with my wife and my mother. My mother was there the whole time, of course. My wife doesn't, uh, oh. my wife wasn't there, but she's researched a lot about it and researched a lot into, uh, what happened to me and stuff since then, so she's gotten a lot, she knows a lot about it just because of all the research that she's done, and I've talked to her about it, and she wants to uh, do it with me, but since my accident, I have actually become like a massive uh, helmet advocate for people who ride. Uh, I don't have pain from the accident, no. But I do have leftover uh, effects, I'll say, from the accident. Because... Oops, I just pressed window. That didn't stop anything, did it? No, okay. Um, I have leftover e effects, I'll say, from the accident. Because uh, on the route, in route to the hospital where I live, well, the closest hospital to where I live, um, I had a stroke. My entire left side of my body was paralyzed. I was in a coma for 22 days. Um, shit. And, uh, I had to go through physical therapy and all that lovely, lovely stuff. It was really painful to go through. I had to... Doctors didn't expect me to walk talk, see, hear again because of where it had affected my brain. Um, so I was kind of looked at like a, I was going to be a lost cause when it happened. But, um, after physical therapy and everything, everything came back. Like, I can feel everything, I can move everything, except... I can, I can feel it, but I cannot, under my own power, move my left ankle or toes. Like, I can try with all of my might, every fiber of being in my body, to move my left toes, to move my left foot. I physically cannot do it. Like, it is impossible for me to move my left toes, my left ankle, like, I cannot do it at all. I can move my fingers, I can move my arm, as you, as, as those of you who saw the, uh, Skittles taste test did, or have seen of any videos of me in the past on my YouTube channel, you know I can move, you know I can, uh, everything's working except for the ankle and toes, but, and I do have, um, Like, a lot of people don't think these are that big of an issue, when, what I'm about to say, but the uh, migraines. My 
god do migraines suck. Like... I did. Um, actually, if you forgive me for just a second, those on Twitch... Oh, actually, no, I'm... That's right, I'm continuing this, uh, this episode until it... Uh, until I've dug out this entire thing. Um, so for those of you on Twitch and, uh... For those of you on YouTube, I'm sorry you won't get this link, but you will if you go back a few episodes on my channel. But, um... Okay, my thing is about to shrink. I know that my, uh... God, I don't want to create a new fucking account. September 9th, 1984. Um... And one of the things, just while I'm trying to do this... One of the things that happened to me when they found me, I was 15 when I got hit. Um, and when they found me after the whole accident, like, in the parking lot where I got hit, they thought I was 30. So instead of taking me to uh, Primary Children's, where I should have gone, they took me to the University of Utah. Um, and it's a good thing that they took me to the University of Utah because if they hadn't, uh, I would have died. Because there's only, I think, five doctors in the country it's either country or world. There's only five doctors in the country that can do the surgery that I needed. And one of them, luckily, had just happened to move down to my state uh, shortly before my accident. And he basically saved my life. The surgery that I needed... Uh, basically entitled, not entitled, uh, basically meant that I had to have both of my, both sides of my skull removed from my head and put in a freezer for two weeks, and then have them reattached later and hope, just pray and hope that my body accepted the pieces of skull that they had taken out, because there was a chance that my skull was not, that it, my body was going to reject the old pieces of skull and think they were foreign entities that were uh, being put into my body. So I was uh, at risk for a lot of stuff. I actually did get an infection in my... Uh, don't remember what part of my body I got the infection in, but I got an infection, and I had to be quarantined for a bit, and only looked at, or people, the only people that could come into the room I was, where I was, 
had to be in, like, full-body hazmat suits, which I'm sure looked awesome. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I do plan on doing a, a short, not a short, but a, I guess a short, because there's not really much to say, or show, a uh, series on YouTube about it, and I'm sure YouTube would uh, demonetize any videos of me showing, like, even, I, unless I age restrict them, so, make sure you're not, it's not age restricted, uh, because I may have to age restrict them because of how gory the photos are that I'm going to be showing of me. Um, but, it was just a whole fucking ordeal that happened, and my aunt actually was making, the whole time I was in the hospital, Yeah, like, I had a feeding tube, I had a tracheotomy, um, I'm not supposed to be speaking, I'm not supposed to be seeing, I'm not supposed to be hearing, I'm not supposed to be smelling. Okay, I guess that is one other effect that I have. Half the time, I can't smell anything. Like, you put a fresh-made, like, steak in front of my nose... I won't be able to smell it. You put... You, like, fart or something next to me. The only way I will know if you farted next to me is if I heard it. I cannot smell anything, like... And they said they can't fix it. That's one of those things that they cannot fix. I also have a, uh... Uh, I also can't, uh, words. I'll think of it in a second. I just thought of it, and then I would skip my mind when I got a text from my mod. I'll think of it and let you know. I'm sorry. But the, uh, as I was saying, the whole time I was in the hospital, my aunt was actually doing, like, a play-by-play -play update page. On Facebook, um, just letting everyone who knew me and who cared about my story and everything, uh, she was doing an update, like, day by day, hour by hour of, well, it started out kind of hour by hour, and then it went to day by day, just because there was so much that was going on some days that she just condensed it all into one post instead of 15 and so, there's that update page on Facebook if y'all would like to go see it or check it out, just learn a little bit more about my story. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry I went off on that tangent. Um, but yeah, everything's better now. I don't even remember what I was talking about before I went off on the tangent. I'm sorry. Um, god damn it, with the migraines, I never thought that migraines would have been so unbelievably intense and painful, like, the migraines, I, there are some days I can't move, I can't get out of bed, I can't do anything because they're so bad. And I actually, there's another bigger reason as to why I get such intensely bad migraines every day, multiple times a day, and why I can't control them with pills, I can't control them with any medicines the doctors prescribe me, anything like that. There's actually a much bigger, much scarier reason, much more worrisome reason as to why I cannot stop my migraines most of the time. Sometimes Tylenol or Ibuprofen works, but most of the time I they don't stop. And it's a shit show when 
on those days. One of the most like worrying things they did to my family, or at least my mother, when I was first hit was, I mean, I'm glad they did this, kind of. Uh, they just rushed me immediately into surgery without asking for permission or anything, which, go ahead, do it. Like, if I had a kid and they were hit by a car, fucking get them into surgery immediately and make sure they're taken care of. Like, goddamn. But, um, when they contacted my mother, they were just, like, someone you know has been injured. Someone you know has been hit by a car and is undergoing surgery right now. Uh, someone you know has been badly injured and you need to come to the hospital immediately to talk to doctors and nurses and she was with my at the time uh 12 year old cousin and he so my mother went to the hospital with my cousin and uh when she got there the nurses and the the nurses, the nurses were there, the doctors weren't talking to her yet. The nurses took my cousin away from her and put him in a side room. And then, just because that's standard procedure for hospitals, is like, take the young ones away, make sure they don't hear the terrifyingly bad news, or whatever. And then talk to the parents. So then my mother went in and talked to the nurses... And they were, um, well, she didn't actually go in there. She went, they took my mother into a different side room where a priest, a chaplain, and a bishop were all waiting for her. And she immediately, this is what she told me, like, I'm, this is all kind of a, stories that were told to me afterwards. Um, she told me that she immediately broke down sobbing because she thought that I had died because of the way that they were just presenting her with religious officials. Uh, they weren't telling her what was going on. None of that. Like, she just thought I was dead. Because all they told her was, your son was hit by a car. I'm going to take you into this side room now. And boom, there was a priest, a chaplain, and a bishop waiting for her. And she's like, oh, god damn, what the fuck, yeah. Yeah, bad shit happens, but you just gotta keep hoping and praying that the good, positive stuff will happen, too. And due to all of this injury and everything that's happened to me, I am a huge advocate. Like, I have talked about it at schools, I've talked about it at colleges. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for wearing helmets while you're uh, rollerblading, biking, longboarding, skateboarding, scootering, whatever the hell you're doing. Wear fucking safety equipment. I was not. I am extremely lucky that I didn't die or something worse didn't happen, happen to me because I was not wearing a helmet. They said that one of the main reasons why I survived was because I was so young when it happened. They said if I had not been my age and I had not been, I, I wasn't wearing a helmet, but if I wasn't, if I was older or younger, I would have had a lot of a, a lot harder of a time surviving. And I'm just, I, I, I sometimes just don't know what to say about that because. I'm like, I guess if I had to get hit, I got hit at the right time. I got hit at the right age. Um, but there are hundreds, if not thousands of people who get brain injuries every month like me, but end up a hell of a lot worse than I did. Like, I am a one in a, I think, Two million chance that it can end up as well as it did for me. Because 
about 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
goddamn safety equipment and survive a lot of really bad stuff that can happen. Or wind up a uh, roadkill on the side of the road someday because you decided, oh, helmets aren't cool. Safety equipment isn't cool, so I'm never going to wear it. Like, I, I just... And like the migraine thing, a lot of people are like, oh, you're just, you're just a baby because your migraines are bad. You people don't understand how bad these fucking migraines can get, like, and the whole reason I have them is because of another thing that, okay, a couple things, a couple more things about my brain injury, um, when I got the brain injury, the stroke that I was, that I told all you about, um, it's causing, like, the stroke I may have any day, any fucking day, at any fucking time, I could have another one. It is completely un unknown if I do or if I don't. I could also have a seizure at any fucking point. Because of my brain injury. Like, sure, everyone can have a brain injury, everyone can have a stroke at some point, but, like, it's ramped up to 11 for me versus everyone else. Like, say everyone is on, like, a scale of 1 to 10 of uh, seizures and strokes. Every normal person, this is what I was told by my doctor, every normal person, like, I, I'd say healthy person, but I don't know everyone's story, so... I'm not going to assume everyone's story and say that, like, Hyper Luigi in the chat, I'm not going to say that they're in pristine condition, they're in pristine health, because I don't know that. I've never physically met Hyper Luigi in person. But everyone's stroke level is, like, at a 2. Everyone's seizure level is at, like, a 0.5. Mine is, like, a point... It's not a point anything. It's, like, 15 for the stroke level and like 12 for the seizure level and so like any fucking point I could just and I'd be out dude for fucking real like a lot of people are like oh migraines can't be that bad dude you sometimes don't want to move. You don't want to talk. You don't want to do shit when you have a migraine. There have been times where I was going, like, I had a whole day of streaming planned, like, 12 different games that I was going to come and stream. I couldn't do it because of my migraine. And, um, the thing that is causing my migraines is not just the brain injury, but my frontal lobes. I'm not a medical scientific person, so I don't know. I know they have a lot of, like, cognitive functions and shit for your brain. Mine are deteriorating. Mine are a quarter of what they should be. They are nearly non-existent in my head. And they are going to continue to deteriorate and disappear for the rest of my life. Does that scare me? Oh, God, yes, does it scare me. Why does it scare me? Because that could end up killing me at any fucking point. Sorry, I just got a message from my wife. Um, but that could just... Honestly, I looked like a I, I looked like a pirate for a while as well. Oh, thank you. Um, here, if you look in chat and you anyone live right now because I can't do it on because fucking YouTube will take down the video if I put it in the description. 
anyone on on the Twitch chat right now that wants to see or go to my update page or whatever on Facebook or wants to just uh, see my journey or whatever and learn more about me, there's the link. Uh, I... Like, a lot of stuff my aunt couldn't share for privacy and security reasons, and she wanted me to share it at some point later. I am actually writing a book on my whole injury and my experiences with it and everything. Um, and my continued experiences with it. Because I still get bullied a lot. I still get harassed a lot for not being able to do stuff because of my brain injury and stuff. Like... It's an invisible disability, but hundreds if not thousands of people across the globe have this disability. And, um, fuck, I forgot where I was going with it. Anyway, I'm writing a book about it. Hopefully, it'll be finished by the end of the year and published by mid-2024, if not late 2024. Um... And I do plan on giving away several free copies here on Twitch. If people are interested, of course, I know people probably, a lot of people probably won't be interested, but, um, yeah, the, my frontal lobes are horrible. They are tiny little things compared to what they should be right now. And at any fucking moment, I could just, uh, and die from it and... Uh, it just scares the shit out of me. It scares the shit out of my wife, too. Though she liked to admit it a lot of the time? No. And again, a lot of the stuff that... Uh, not everything that happened to me has been posted on the Facebook update page. A lot of the stuff I was told after the fact and told privately because it was too gory, it was too worrying too scary or whatever to go on the Facebook page and worry everyone about it, so it was, uh, it was told to me, like, a year afterwards, and it was left up to me to tell everyone if people want to know. Uh, long story short, just because I know I've been talking about it for a minute, and I'm sure some people either watching on YouTube or watching in the future, watching in the past, if you can do that. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are getting tired or bored of me rambling on about my brain injury. I'm rambling on about my injury, so long story short, wear a goddamn helmet. Like, it'll save your fucking life someday. They are so important. Like, Safety equipment is so important. It doesn't matter if you're playing football. It doesn't matter if you're playing baseball. It doesn't matter if you're just riding a scooter, longboard, whatever. Wear some goddamn safety equipment. Like, I am partnered up with the uh, Utah Brain Injury Alliance people, and I give away hundreds of helmets every year to schools and stuff, just because they're so fucking important, and so many kids don't have them, or refuse to wear them. So. I just... Long story short, wear a helmet. Wear safety pads. Wear safety equipment. It's a really important thing to do. That's the moral of the story is, uh, like, the whole time I was in the hospital, I had to get food shoved into my stomach through a feeding tube because I couldn't eat with the breathing apparatus surgically inserted into my throat. Like, moral of the story, wear helmets, like, 
a lot of really bad stuff can happen to you if you do not wear helmets. Who are your streamers? Hi guys! Uh, Harper Luigi. Hi! <laughs> uh, I'm just telling them about this. Oh, yes, moral of the story, I heard that and part I, wearing helmets. Helmet safety is And I sent very my important. Facebook page. Did you tell them everything? I am on working on it. Oh. Did you know... Can I tell part of your story? You're such a... Aww. And I told them that I am planning on doing, like, a full video on it with you and my mother. Talking like a documentary, about yes. The safety of it. Because I have talked to, to schools and classes before about it, because... It's very significant. I don't know how much he's told you so far, but he was in a medically induced coma for, for about, like, one and a half months. 22 and like, days. And then I was in outpatient rehab, rehab at yeah. the primary children's for 55 it seemed like forever we were just telling my dad that because i don't know if we told you about my dad's situation but he is stubborn and right now we're trying to work with him to do like daily exercises so he can also get back on his feet and hopefully within the next few days i don't know it could be weeks still which we're hoping not but we want him to be mobile we want him to be able to walk and use the bathroom on his own so we don't have to keep changing his diapers and things. But every time we try to talk to him, he just seems to be angry and combative and whatever. So he argues. And we use Jake's um, we use stories, my stories and as stuff examples to help yeah, to try to motivate push him. him. And stuff. Yeah. Like Jake's first walk, we actually have a video of it. I posted on. Uh, on my Facebook page. I love it because it shows his progress. Like, his first run, it wasn't perfect. But it was It's progress. progress. Is dinner ready? Yeah. Is that why you were coming down to talk to me? Yes. My mom wanted to know if you would like to eat. You don't have to leave the stream just yet. Um, I can bring food down to no, you, it's, or... It's good. I've been going for about an hour now. Well, it was really nice talking to you. Sorry that I came in and interrupted. It's okay. <laughs> Alright guys, um, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you Hyper Luigi for being, the being best. here and talking to me and yes, being the best. Um, You're like our main audience. So I, don't I don't know when I'll be able to stream next, but I will stream as much as I can, as often as I can. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. You're yes. so kind. I... I will. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being here and talking to me. Thank you for being our main audience and support. I can't tell you how much... I, I know he values it, and I value it too because you're supporting him. So I would like to see an investment with his hobbies, and you're helping him really like spread his wings right now. So thank you from me. I know he thinks you often, but I don't think I thank you enough on my behalf. I love to see his progress still, and this is really fun, so. And I'm just, sorry, I'm not trying to oh, interrupt you, but just for people watching either on YouTube or here on Twitch, I'm not going to ask for a like goal. I'm not going to ask for you guys to subscribe, follow, whatever. You can if you want to. That's by choice. That is yeah. by choice. What I am asking you to do I am only asking you to asking you to do these couple really simple things. Go buy a helmet. Go buy safety equipment if you're going to ride a bike, ride a longboard, ride a scooter, whatever. Go buy safety equipment and be safe. You have no idea how much that could impact your life if you do not wear safety equipment when you're on any sort of motorized or non-motorized vehicle. Basically, prioritize yourself, because if you don't consider your own life, your life is an investment. You think you make a memory day-to-day, -day, imagine that day-to-day, -day, eventually it'll be weekly, it'll be monthly, it'll be yearly. You have no idea the kind of effect it will have on the people around you if, if you're something gone. really bad happens to you because you wouldn't wear a helmet or some other sort of safety equipment. He and I had a heated argument before we got married over a surgery, and I can't tell you how impactful that was because we had...
this conversation at least three times within the month that he was supposed to have a scheduled surgery. Yes, and I do know, have a surgery that needs yeah, to. We know it was during COVID, so there were reasons why I probably wouldn't have been allowed, but by... I really wanted to be if it was like a post recovery day that he might still be inpatient that I could visit him. And it broke my heart because I was worried. He kind of dug in and said, What if I died that day? And I said, You know, I really wouldn't want to think about that because you're I might already not be my there for you and you're already my yes. favorite person. <laughs> I, I told him the worst scenario in my head is that I'm going to be in the living room possibly with either both my parents or just my mom knowing because my dad, he's he's a TV watcher. I don't know how to explain it. That's literally all he does is he works, and then he comes home and watches TV, and they have a spare TV in their bedroom. So I figured my mom and I usually watch scary movies at night. There'd be a weird scenario where possibly I'm just going to be there reading a book or reading my phone and or picking my nose, and I get a, a message from his family saying that he has passed. And that's going to be the worst thing possible. So... What we like, he said, he, we just want you not only to buy safety gear if you ever make a plan for hiking, biking, whatever. Yeah, we not want only you to buy it, but wear it. Prioritize and, it. and invest in yourself. That's what we're asking. Yes. We love you. We love you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys as soon as possible. Bye, guys.